Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Impact on your Millennium Media stations. I'm your host, Sammy C., and our program airs on our four radio stations of Millennium Media every Sunday at this time. We're grateful that you're here joining us today. As you know, we've uh, been on the mode of back to school and getting everybody geared up for the school season uh, with Mike Hyatt here a couple of weeks back, Dr. Eugene Sun this past Sunday, and today we're going to focus in on the Octavia Flynn Public Library. A while back, we had Tammy Moe, the director, uh, join us on the program, and uh, what a great, great lady and what a great asset to have in this community. And she's going to be our guest today, joined by Deputy Director, 20-year veteran of the library here, Betty Martin. And it's an honor having both of you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Sammy. Good morning. Are we ready for school? We're ready. We're three weeks late, if we're not. <laughs> <laughs> three weeks late. Wow. It's been a while since we've had you on the air, but I know that the last time we had you on, Tammy, we had a, a terrific time and, and covered a lot of ground and of course, shared a lot of great uh, things that the library is doing. And uh, here we are in uh, uh, the getting ready for the fall season. I mean, it's hard to imagine we're already p approaching September. But we, we want to cover how the library integrates in, in the back-to-school uh, thought, if you would. And uh, in so many ways, number one, you've got accessibility to some privacy if you want to go and do homework and, and whatever. If you need a place where you want to do some research, if you want to do papers, what have you, everything's right at your fingertips. That's right. Yeah, it is hard to believe that fall is already here. The summer went by so quickly. But um, really, we're so excited to be out there supporting educators because we believe that this is the most important job that there is. OFPL team members just recently participated in the new teacher orientation at JFK Middle School where we signed up 25 new educators with teacher cards. Now, teacher cards, a lot of people don't know about this. They're designed to support our community educators because we realize that their job is difficult and they really need every um, edge that they can get to help our kids. Teachers can borrow up to 30 items at a time for three weeks with these cards. So that's three times what a normal library card will allow you. In order to get a teacher card, you need to come in and present a school badge, a copy of your employment contract, a paycheck stub, or a homeschool certificate. So this goes for any educator, whether they're in a hospital or a recreational setting or a homeschool setting. It's really easy to acquire this, and then you have to renew annually. They expire August 15th of every year. But this gives you a lot of leeway to take out more materials because we need to support kids in the classroom. We also have library cards available for the whole family, whether you're from in McKinley County or outside of McKinley County. In order to get a library card to use our facilities and our collections, you just need a state-issued ID and proof of residency here. If you live outside of McKinley County, then there's an annual charge of $15 per card. Now, children between the ages of 5 and 17 need a legal guardian to co-sign on their applications. But regular library cards allow for our neighbors to check out 10 items at a time with no more than five items in any one format. With these library cards, you're going to gain access to the internet either through wireless if you have your own devices or through our computers which are on site at both libraries. We have nearly 50 computers between the two branches. Printing is available at the library in both color and black and white, and it's less expensive than anywhere else actually in Gallup. We also have scanning services, should you need those. We offer school tours throughout the year to introduce the school children to the library, and the teachers just need to contact our youth services librarian, Ann Price, to customize the visit around your classroom needs so you can actually tailor it to what you're studying at the time. We can support team book clubs with books, reading guides, and leading discussions. Sometimes it can be really tough on a parent, too, to help their child with their homework, especially because we're shifting more and more towards digital platforms. Our technology trainer, Marco Chavez, offers classes for levels of experience, for many different levels of experience, and you can schedule one-to-one -one sessions if you need more focused help. So, along with just these li regular library sources that you think of with the li public library, you get access to many other resources beyond that. We have a, a series of databases. Creative Bug, which is by Joanne's Fabric, has more than a thousand award-winning arts and craft video classes taught by recognized design experts and artists. In order to access Creative Bug, you do need that library card, and you just go to creativebug.com slash lib slash OFPL. Sign in, and you'll be able to access all these great um, tutorials on there. 
Canopy is an on-demand streaming video platform for public libraries and universities that offers viewers a large collection of award-winning films and provides um, and documentaries. They have great content for kids. I mean, a really rich collection there. And Octavia Felon Public Library provides all card holders access to this platform for free. Each month, you'll be given six tokens to use on films. Regardless of whether you use six or none, you'll be given a fresh six tokens every single month. So sign up for that library card and get ready to register at galloplibrary.canopy, and that's with a K, K-A-N-O-P-Y dot com. There's also taking the classroom out of the class with the New Mexico Family Pass. This gives you access to several museums and state parks throughout New Mexico. It's good for, I think it's four people, is that right, Betty, that you can... Yes enter these cultural institutions so get the get the kids loaded up on the weekend and go out and learn about uh, the history of New Mexico and this rich uh, environment that we live in and not have to pay anything so this is another privilege with having that library card we also offer access to the databases on El Portal which is supported by grant funds through the United States Institute of Museum and Library Science through El Portal, you have searchable access to the Albuquerque Journal, Las Cruces Sun, and the Roswell Daily Records, so this can really help for research in the classroom and at home. Uh, Chilton manuals are available for automotive repair. There's an online library reference collection with different areas, including arts, biographies, business, education, environment, history, medicine, law, multicultural studies, religion, science, social science. So if you need research support there, it's right at your fingertips. There's another section called Kids Info Bits, which is designed for kids research, doing research in kindergarten through the fifth grade. They're um, also topically organized, so it's easy for kids to find what they're looking for. Apu opposing viewpoints. It delivers facts and pro and con perspectives on today's hottest social topics. This is ideal for any research assignment, especially in the middle school age. And my personal favorite is BrainFuse, which provides students of all ages with an online tutoring and homework help in English and Spanish from 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. So this is like once you get out of school and you need that help with whatever subject matter that you don't understand, you can get on and get live tutoring help right away. It's 24-7 access to comprehensive library tests, like uh, interactive tests including academic skills assessment, standardized tests, and the New Mexico Align test. They offer online writing labs, so you can get help with your writing. You can actually turn your papers in and have those papers edited by a professional and sent back to you, so there's no reason not to ace those uh, research assignments that you have coming your way. Another cool thing about BrainFuse is you can make your own custom flashcards and you can create games to study with. There is an application called Meet. It's a private virtual study room where you can meet up with your friends and study online together. BrainWave is an application where you can share movie-like notes. So you're animating your notes for school that you're taking. If one of your friends has missed a class, you can share your notes that way. An e-parachute is designed to help students match their skills and interests with different majors once you start to go down that college path and uh, will really give you some insight on where, where to go, where to go to school, what to study. And that is accessible at L Portal, which is E-L-P-O-R-T-A-L-N-M.org, lportalnm.org. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. That's right, and that's not all. That's not all. <laughs> is, is there more? <laughs> you've only you've taken the up the whole. You've taken up the whole program. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Betty, would you like to interject something into that? W what else would you like to add to that? Uh, Betty Martin, who is the deputy director of the Octavia Fullen Public Library. What else would you like to share with us uh, regarding what they offer now that school season is underway? Well, this year, this is the first year we're doing it. It's a scholarship club. Um, we're kicking it off in October. We want to organize a club for students to work together to find money for college. Help, um, it, it's to help students who need money for anything, for college, anything that they need. Um, there are literally billions of dollars in scholarships, grants, and competition prizes to support college education. And mm -hmm. it has been proven that working as a team to find those resources is much more effective than doing it alone. And there is a pizza involved. Wow. So, <laughs> 
if you come, you'll get pizza. We'll <laughs> feed you. We like to feed people. In case right. anybody hasn't been to any any events at the library, we always have food. Well, I'll tell you, you know, the, the <laughs> library, I, I look back in the day when we were growing up and all that, and we've evolved so much. Sure. And, of course, we've stayed, you know, that's what's neat about it, Betty and, and Tammy. We've stayed really uh, with the Octavia Flynn Public Library and even the Children's Library, for that matter. We've really stayed on the cutting edge of library uh, as it is today. True. Uh, with all the offerings and, and, of course, the technical that goes with it. Uh, it. You know, it seems like we've really stayed on the cutting edge. And for our community, a community our size, we have a lot going for ourselves. Oh, yeah. The city is really generous with their support of the library. So they want to make sure that those resources are out there for our kids so they have every advantage that they can. Yeah, and we get the thing of the, the library too. Now you talk about the you talk about the kill, the children's library a little while ago. We we want to get everybody involved. We've got that Teen City Redesign Project at the Children's Library branch. So uh, let's share some information on that, Betty. Yes, we are going to be redesigning the teen area. Um, so teens need their own space to socialize, network, and study in. And we're right now we're not providing that space. Um, in September, we'll kick off the Teen City redesign project at the Children's Library. So participants are needed. We're seeking for individuals to participate in short focus groups um, to help us re de redesign the, uh, the Teen City so we get an idea of what they want. So and what how, they do, need. how do they get involved with this? I mean, where do they, what's the first step? What do they do if, they, if they're, they're listening to the show today and they love what you're talking about? How, what's the first step for them to get involved? Well, they have to be age 12 to 20 years old. Um, live within McKinley County and surrounding area, and they must be able to attend one of the following dates, our focus groups. They'll be on Tuesday, August 27th at five o'clock, mm -hmm. um, Thursday, August 29th at five o'clock, and Saturday, August 31st at two o'clock. Yeah, so that week, the week of the 27th, 29th, and 31st, you have a lot going on right. with uh, the focus groups. And hopefully they'll be able to attend one or, or more of uh, those uh, uh, conferences or sessions, if you would, to be able to dream and dream big of how to redesign. This is actually pretty cool to have that. And, you know, speaking of teens and, and doing the Teen City there at the library, we're also uh, uh, encouraging teens to volunteer to help the library. That's right. This is the first time, actually, that we've uh, solicited volunteers from the teen teen community so we had one this summer actually coming and do an internship with us and she spent her time working in different areas of the library uh, learning about what librarians do and how libraries run so she actually designed one of our exhibits that's at the library about the New Mexico family pass she helped with the collection development of our graphic novels because um, this is an area that teens really are gravitating towards and we mm -hmm. want to expand that collection. Mm -hmm. What else would you say about our, our teen volunteer and internship program? Well, she learned a lot. She went to all the different departments so, so she could get an idea of what she liked to do. And I think she realized that we don't just read books. <laughs> Um, because we do a lot of work behind the scenes that oh, yeah. nobody sees. Yeah, and this is great too because I mean students can actually cultivate uh, uh, if they choose to go to college they can cultivate uh, a relationship here right. uh, that they can take with them and uh, all the, the background and the knowledge that they attain from being a volunteer they may be able to be a part of the library at the university or college that they plan to go to or even you know school of, of, of vocational magnitude who knows well also it puts them at an advantage because when you're applying for a job if you have work experience and you have a good reference then you have uh, an edge up over somebody mm -hmm. who doesn't so it is hard to get work experience here in Gallup because it's difficult to find a job so yeah. this really gives them practical work working experience and we can provide a reference for them. Well, it stimulates an area of interest too that they may not know that they have in being able to, you know, learn some of the back behind the scenes type of work that goes on with the library, which is uh, just a whole variety of things. That's right. Everybody thinks those books and movies just magically appear on the shelf, but that isn't <laughs> so. <laughs> There's a lot to it. organization, uh, you know, responsibility, accountability. That's a lot right. Of things that, a lot of things that go, that, that go into that thing. Great information. That's a lot of good stuff. So back to school really is, is is a big, big part. So, you know, we look back now and, and you've talked about some of the offerings, a, a lot of the offerings that the library offers the uh, area and the students and families for, for that matter. The annual report and the quantifiable impact that the library has had in the community. This has been something that just came out here a while back too. So. Uh, 
what, what, what kind of information can you share as far as the impact of the Octavia Fullen Public Library and the Children's Library to the community based on this report that was issued? Well, the report is, is a combination of both libraries. Mm -hmm. So everything, all these numbers reflect both. Um, well, let's see, our, the total circulation of all the material in both libraries. Can you guess, Sammy? Uh, you know, I wouldn't, really wouldn't know where to begin, <laughs> Debbie. I think that, that's why I brought you here, because you're the expert. <laughs> that, that's m one of my favorite questions to ask, and I'll ask you my second favorite. Um, but, but this past year, a total circulation of 133, th 130 items, 130,000 items. Wow. Were, were increased, and it was increased by 6,000. So 6,000 more from last year. From the prior year. And when you say right. circulating items, what are we talking about? We're, Items checked out or items downloaded on OverDrive, eBooks, audiobooks, uh -huh. a canopy, movies. So it was that up 6,000 6, circulation. So you had, you had 6,000 more items. We had 6,000 more than last than year. Than last year on the mm -hmm. circulated For items. For a total well. of 130,000. 130,000. Yeah, that's good. The last time you were here, Tammy, you mentioned the amount of people that actually come through the library. Yeah, can you remember that's that my, number? That's, well, that's remember my that next number, favorite that's, question. <laughs> it's, it's probably grown quite a bit, I would think. It Everything has grown. This it day. was 202,405 people well, came through our doors. And that's over a 12-month period? Yes, and okay. that increased by 5,714. From so the prior quite year. a bit, yeah. Yeah. So is that In what, January year. through December? or is It's it? July through June. Oh, which is the fiscal year. Then. Right, fiscal, fiscal year. year. We go by fiscal year. Yeah, so that's great. So this is all relatively new information mm -hmm. from this yeah, past I just, fiscal year. Yeah, I just completed it. So. Wow. Uh, and we have a total of 36,564 registered users. Wow. So, and it's about half, half in Gallup and half in the county. When we say registered users, we're talking about people who have library, library cards, cards and the teachers and, and mm -hmm. what have you. Cool. What was that number? 36,564. That's pretty darn good. Wow. Well, we have a population of Gallup of what, 20,000 plus or minus? Mm -hmm. yeah, 21,000. If, if everybody stays at home, it would be about 20,000. <laughs> But then you also have the, uh, the you know the impact of the uh, the county and your the impact of the reservations that are nearby. So it's almost double the population of what the community of Gallup oh. is. And not everybody in Gallup uses a library, which is unfortunate. But we want to state that. So maybe out of the twenty thousand, I don't know what the number is of people from the community, but thirty six thousand is a pretty good number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Darned about enough. fifty fifty. And that's. Children's Library and Main Library. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. great. With all the, the services. And for those, you know, and we really want to interject one thing here, and hopefully we'll get grow those numbers even more this next fiscal year, is that folks that maybe have not been to the library here in a while need to take a moment and rediscover it because there's so much there. We need to rediscover the library and find out, you know, what, what do they offer? And there's probably services and, and, and uh, uh, engaging aspects of the library that folks don't realize the library does. Absolutely. So it'd be good to just come by and get an orientation. And I'm sure if somebody walked into the Octavia Fulton Public Library or the Children's Library and saw your both of your smiling faces, <laughs> that you'll be more than happy to give them a tour of the place and, and show them uh, you know some of the attributes of, of the library and what you offer. Absolutely. Yeah, so take the, take a moment. If you, haven't, uh, if you haven't been to the library in a while, maybe, you know, it's been a few years. That's right. Uh, go by and see what they offer. A lot of people don't have internet service at home, but they've got internet capabilities over at the library. That's a, that's a nice service for people to do. And for, we have and, Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi. If people have a hard time, I know when you've, if you've never worked in, with a computer. Yes. People, it's a scary thought for a lot of people. I remember when we first got introduced to computers, like I was afraid to push anything because something was going to blow up on <laughs> me. But we want to make sure that if they've never never done this before, that you can get an orientation by going to the library. Yeah, yeah Marcos. That's... Marcos Chavez is our technology yeah, trainer. Yeah, he's terrific. Yeah, so yeah. anytime you need help one-on-one, -on -one, you just go in there. Yeah. And we're there to support you. We, um, Our role is to build agency within this community and wherever you're at that's where, where we will meet you yeah, and if it's a while before you can maybe get by the library and you're tuning into the program today we also have a website right yep and the website we can uh, give you an orientation early on of what we do offer at the library that's right at least it'll give you it'll get your feet wet before you walk into the place that's right what's that website galloplibrary.org piece of cake galloplibrary.org it's that simple Yes. Okay, that's good stuff. Let's do some more statistics. Um, let's see. We had well, our total budget for the year was eight hundred and forty-eight thousand, 
and um, we spent about 96000 on uh, materials, and that doesn't include everything else. And every the programming and everything, actually, we spent less money. I didn't write it down. Uh, but we spent less money this year than we did l last year, and we had more events this year. Mm -hmm. So we did more with less money. Well, I, I get a report here at the radio station every, every week. Betty, you're notorious about this. Stuff <laughs> out to me. Yes. Betty Martin is fantastic. She gets the stuff out to us so that we can pass the word on to the general public by way of public service announcements. There, uh, there's. I don't think there's idle time. There's a lot going on every week at the right. at the Octavia Fulton Public. Pretty Library. much every day. Yeah, there's there's something going on. Now that is that published for those that maybe you know are in and out of their cars and maybe in and out of their offices or in and out of their homes. Uh, where they could actually go, it, it's, it's, it's part, what you send us is part of your website too, is, it, is that right? Yes, it's on our website. We mm -hmm. also have our Facebook page. Follow us on Facebook. You get all the information that you need. Um, everything, all the events are published on there. Um, and we have, also have Instagram. Um, and everything is Gallup Library. So Facebook.com slash Gallup Library. Um, Instagram.com will be slash Gallup Library. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy to find us. And information about us. Now, a little birdie told me, uh, Tammy Mo, that uh, <laughs> there's a new library in the works. Woo -woo. Woo -woo. Is that right? Yeah, we're still working on getting that new library project underway. Well, what's the progress of this? What's the process and what's the progress? Well, the current library concept was approved in 2017, so it's been a couple of years now, and it needs some modifications to make it an efficient space for the activities that OFPL supports and the number of people that use our library. When we say OFPL, that's Octavia Fallen Public. Library. That's what it stands for. That's true. Yeah. I should. It's That's so okay. much easier I, I just, to was, say. I was able to just qualify. <laughs> it, so. The Library Advisory Board's been in discussion for over a year on those modifications to the concept that they have already approved. Also about the site location and fundraising strategies. So the construction cost for that current concept are almost twenty million which is a big number and we really have to have community-wide support in mm -hmm. order to like make this happen. So um, we're talking with the city management team but and with the library advisory board um, advising us on what the community needs are. We would really love it if the community would come out and let our policymakers know how much the library impacts the future of our of our city and of our county so just really um, if you can get the word out there and let your uh, representative your council representatives know and the mayor that this is really a a big and important um, I guess development for this entire community it affects everybody so like the more people the more voice we have then then the more we can move forward so right well, now you hear, you hear the phrase quality of life and library is a big part of the quality of life just like you know uh, schools and, 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 and medical community uh, needs and and how uh, facilities and what have you this is quality of life athletics uh, you know sporting events recreational programs for kids uh, library is a quality of life aspect of our community and to see it grow is very gratifying because you know that we're making some progress with this. That's right. Public yeah. libraries are as American as jazz. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's great, great information. So you'll keep us posted on that as it, as it progresses? Absolutely. Yeah. It will be on our website, on our social media. We'll yeah. continually provide updates. Yeah. And uh, I know you briefly touched on it the last time we were on the air, that this was going to eventually happen sooner or later. But we're not anywhere close to give any more specific details. Is that right? That's right. Well, the thing that's holding us up are the site location and funding. Mm -hmm. So there's kind of a divide between whether that library should remain downtown and be the jewel really of the downtown redevelopment or if it should be moved outside or on the perimeter of downtown to lower the cost because if we build downtown then we're building vertical if we move outside then we can build horizontal which would reduce the cost but mm. there we're about 50 50 on whether to keep it downtown or not so well i'm going to tip it to 51 because i vote downtown woo so woo let's see if we can make it stay and it's really should be part of the downtown area I, m my opinion you know absolutely i, know I was up to the farm and i was happened to be in farmington for the connie mac world series broadcasting we here and they had a grand opening of their new library there at that time uh -huh. so i got a chance to go and was impressed with what they had to offer beautiful but theirs is not quite in the downtown area maybe just a little bit on the outskirts there i think it's just off East 20th or, or 20th Street or whatever the case may be, but a little off the, the downtown area, but I can see the value because a lot of people still walk to the library, uh, you know, 
parking is always an issue, as you know, but they like to walk. And a lot of people live within the close proximity of the library, so it's a lot easier, a lot more accessible. Well, I believe that besides uh, Sammy C's, we're probably the most hopping spot downtown, <laughs> so. <laughs> you're, you're very kind. You're very I kind. Agree. <laughs> so you have an American Creed program coming up on the 30th. It'll be a Friday, and that'll be coming up uh, in about two weeks from now. And uh, what, what's great about this, uh, you, first of all, the Octavia Fullen Public Library was blessed in getting a grant for this thing. And with the grant, you have to bring in an author. And you were uh, able to get Jimmy Santiago Baca, who has a great story in his own right. And he's going to be in Gallup on the 30th. Uh, so tell me about the American Crete program and how this thing is going to integrate with uh, the library. Betty, is gonna, are you going to lead us off on that? or? You've been talking to Jimmy, so I figured you'd be the natural candidate to open up the conversation on it. By the way, we're down to our last five minutes of the program. So. Wow, this went quick. Yeah. Oh, wow. Sure. Um, like Sammy said, the, the American Creed, it's a screening of the film, American Creed. Um, and Jimmy Santiago, Doc Santiago Baca is going to lead the discussion. He's our scholar. Um, it's going to be at El Moro Event Center August 30th at 6.30 p.m. And we, we, we just want to get everybody involved and create a dialogue and get them all talking. And they're going to be discussing what it means to be an American. Mm -hmm. um, everybody has a different point of view. So it's good to get everybody's perspective. And Jimmy will be involved, too. And he has a, a whole perspective of everything. Mm -hmm. So he's done it before. Yeah, this is great. And... Uh, kind of reinstilling a lot of uh, American values, I think, to the overall conversation. I think the conversation will be very spirited and uh, <laughs> will, will be fun to, to be a part of. Well, it's really an amazing documentary, actually, once you watch it. So you can preview part of it. Um, we're going to show the whole version, but you can get online and you can see the PBS version, which is a shorter version. I think it's only an hour long. Is mm -hmm. that correct? There's clips. There's movie like teasers. So you can't that see are the like, whole thing. They're like ten minutes. I think you can. I There'll think it's available online also. A multitude of segments is that it? A multitude of segments is that? Well, I wa I've watched the movie twice now, so um, it's by. I don't know if you want to talk about who's in the movie, Condi and Condoleezza Rice. Um, we don't want to give a to give away the whole story here. Joe, Joe Madden, um, Joan Blades, David McK J David M Kennedy. Yeah. Um, he won a Pulitzer Prize. There's a variety of people. There's an author. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just to get everybody talking. And it's designed to engage the com community in this discussion about citizenship and the American I identity. I think it's a great, great deal. Very timely too, because of all that goes on with you know with people that should be naturalized. And you know, my parents went through the naturalizing process of coming from Italy. And I know a lot of families here, Gallup being a melting pot of a lot of Europeans coming in, everybody went through the quote unquote process. Right. And this will be something that'll at least give you an idea what the process it's is. Perfect. And I think we lost lost a little bit of that over the years because it was so, people are so lenient. And I don't know if it was a matter of people not, not really uh, feeling that the process was necessary, but the process is necessary to be able to uh, to, to go through the to go through this uh, the way it should be gone through. Well, the documentary really um, is set up by talking to students who are first year college students, and they go to um, Condoleezza Rice and uh, Mr. Kennedy visit a university, and they're talking about how it our pasts influence our futures and how we have to make that bridge and so with immigrant families a lot of, of the past was kind of lost because um, to be American is kind of this idealistic standard of you make who you are and sometimes it leads people um, a little bit short feeling mm -hmm. like that responsibility lies on their shoulder that if they don't make it that it's something that they've done but it does talk about things like the Great Depression and how that really for a lot of the immigrants coming into this country um, destroyed what they were building at one point and how that affected the next generations to come and how we've kind of forgotten that we've become polarized in America about um, what we really stand for and the ideals of what it means to be a citizenship citizen here and so libraries are kind of that um 
they support that kind of uh, need for the community to come together and help others. It's not just about you, whether you make it or not. It's about whether you bring up your neighbors with you and you make sure that your community is thriving because uh, it just can't be about self-interest. It has to be about all of us. As Americans, for sure. That'll be on the 30th at 6 p.m. at the El Moro uh, Conference Center, correct? At 6.30. 6.30 p.m. 6.30 p.m. on the 30th. So please attend, and this is open to the public. Yes, free. No, and free. we will have refreshments. <laughs> Good, and you'll get a chance to meet Jimmy Santiago Baca. Ladies, we're out of time. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll have to do it again soon. Thank you so much. Peace you. <laughs> Enjoyed having you here again. We're visiting with the director of the Octavia Flynn Public Library and the Children's Library, Tammy Mullen, bringing her, uh, or with her today, Deputy Director Betty Martin, a 20-year veteran of the uh, Gallup Library System. Thank you so much, ladies. Have a terrific day and a great weekend and a great week, and we'll look forward to uh, connecting with you down the road. Thank you. And that's Thank Impact you. today. Have a great day, everybody.